Hey guys, it's Tony. Rama word. This is Rama. Before I give this word, it's imperative that you understand what this means. Rama is an utterance. Um, that's simply what it means in the Greek. It's just an utterance. This is a word of the Lord and the word of the Lord. Um, but he wants me to impress upon you, to stress the, the importance of understanding certain things about him. Because many people, especially those who are um, babes in Christ, many people who have come into the knowledge of Christ but have not really matured to a place of understanding his character, how he moves, um, they will they will get a word, try to receive a word, but the moment certain things start to happen in their lives or they see certain things, that that word no longer holds the value that it once did, not because God God's word is fallible, not because God's word is not true, not because God doesn't love you. Um, it decreases in value to them because they don't understand how God moves and his character and the timeline of events um, regarding their lives. Now, um, this word is, um, you know, he spoke this to me on yesterday um, and that I explain it to you guys. He is committed to himself. And because he is a part of us as believers, he is equally as committed to us. So that's the first thing in understanding God. He is. He has not created us as these um, beings that he just controls and puppeteers around. And if things happen that are good for you, then good. If they don't happen, um, like he said, then, then it's cool. He's figuring out as he goes. There are a lot of things that along your journey, no matter if you've gotten a word and at one point you believed it, a lot of times we... That word no longer has the value that it did because not because God's word is not true, not because we don't have a whole book um, called the Bible that um, is full of testimony of his words coming to pass no matter how long it took, but because we don't understand his character. He told me yesterday, um, you did not abort it. You're just not showing it. And a lot of times because, um, you know, God gives us a word, um, we conceive that word. Um, when we don't start seeing things progress the way we, we think we should, because there are things like, say, for instance, on an actual pregnancy, there are, are, are stages of pregnancy and phases um, in, in processes that we look for evidence to affirm that that thing is coming to pass. So you may find out you're pregnant, okay? So you find out you're pregnant, you go to the doctor, the doctor affirms it. You take the blood test and all of that. Um, about four or five weeks into it, you may start having headaches. You may start feeling really, really sleepy. You may start feeling sick. If those things, because they've happened to everyone in the past, if those things aren't happening, you may start getting worried. You may start questioning things. Okay, so you get past that point. Then, 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 you know, you're supposed to be showing at a certain point. You know, if there, there, there are people that say, well, if you're not, you know, you're too small. Are you really four or five months? You're, you should be bigger than that. What they're saying is there should be more evidence of the thing inside of you. And so we look for sightings. We look for things, visible things to affirm the word that God has placed inside of us. Now, as a mother, as a, as a pregnant woman, there are things that you can feel. I need you to hear me with your spiritual ears. There are things that you can feel going on inside your body, regardless. You know, in, in, in your first trimester, um, even, some people have reported this in their first trimester, when you're usually not even showing, you can feel flutters. You can feel flutters in your womb. Everyone on the outside, there are people pushing past you in the line um, at the store. Nobody knows you're pregnant because you don't visibly look pregnant, but there are flutters. 
there are flutters. And so we have got to learn to stop looking for certain evidences and proof that the thing that God has said is inside of us, growing inside of us, that is going to, that is going to be manifest one day. That is there. We have to know and understand that it is there. God said that he is correcting it. That is the name of this word. He is correcting it. And, and, and he wants me to give this timeline of events. When God created everything, when Moses accounted creation in the book of Genesis, and God goes through, in the beginning, Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and, and darkness uh, hovered over the face of the deep, and all of these things, God speaks light. And then he says, at the completion of every day of creation, I need you to hear me by the spirit of the Lord. The Lord says, he saw that it was good. Moses says, the Lord saw that it was good. I need you to hear me. God did not rest until he saw that everything was good. Now, when God created everything in Genesis, just as he created Adam and Eve, and Eve was inside of Adam, nobody could see it, the animals couldn't see it, but Eve was certainly inside of Adam the whole time. And so were we. Meaning our destinies, the Bible says that God sees the end to the beginning, that he is not, you know, I think, let me, let me make this straight, plain for you. A lot of times without thinking, we tend to think that God, when a person comes into a physical existence, like you birth a baby, that somehow right before that baby um, is conceived, God creates their destiny. No, no. Your destiny was set in stone at the foundations of the world. When God created all spirits, he's not creating spirits, guys. They, you were already in existence before you physically came to be, and so was your destiny. Timeline. Before God formed Adam, and you hear him say this even to the prophet Jeremiah, before God formed Adam, all of our destinies were already in motion and fulfilled. He says that he gives us an expected end. So there is, there is a place before God created anything physically, there is a place that he has for each of us, okay? An expected end. Not what you expect, what he expects. What he knows based on his infinite knowledge and being. So what happens is, God has created every destiny and then he creates Adam and he, and he forms us, human beings. And then temptation steps in. The enemy steps in in the garden. He tempts Eve. He tempts her. Now, God's word in the beginning in Genesis is linear. You see it. God's word is linear. He speaks light. Light is. There's nothing hindering it. He speaks the fowl of the air, the fowl of the air, the, the, the fish in the sea. He speaks all of these things and straight away those things become manifest. Those things are physical beings. There was no hindrance until the enemy steps in into the garden. And you know when the enemy stepped into the garden, his timing tells on him. The enemy steps in. As soon as Adam and Eve are joined in holy matrimony, he steps in then before they can procreate. I need you to hear me with your spiritual ears. He steps in before they can produce the things that God has predestined before he physically created them. So God's word is linear. When God spoke your destiny, it's done straight away. What happens is the same thing that happened with Eve in the garden. She could have had knowledge. She could have asked. She had access to God. They walked with God. They dwelt with God. She could have gotten anything she needed from the Lord. The enemy comes in and tempts her. And now she has this free will to, 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 to make decisions. 
And what happened is because there were things that Eve felt like she didn't know that she could know, she accepts that temptation. And remember God's ultimate plan was for us to dwell with him forever, live forever, eat the good of the land and never die. Now, Eve, the enemy has tempted her to make us subject to death, to the temptations and wiles of the enemy. But God already had a plan. Because his word is true, because he's not figuring it out uh, uh, along the way, Jesus was already set in stone. Your destiny was set in stone and so was the destiny of Jesus. He already had the ram in the bush. So God is not trying to figure it out. Your destiny is your destiny. The thing he's shown you, the thing he said is coming to pass in your life, the thing that you've seen in dreams and visions, the thing that you know in here, whether or not you have made missteps along the way, other people uh, um, adjacent to your destiny have made missteps that have caused detours, that have caused some uh, delays, whether or not that has happened, you still have an expected end. And the things that you've seen in your dreams, the things you've seen in your visions, that is still your expected end. God's word is not fallible. God's word is, is linear. It's just that now we have to deal with temptation. Now we, have de we make decisions based on the decision that Eve made um, 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 in the garden to do things her own way, to get knowledge and understanding her own way outside of God. But your destiny, that dream, that vision is still your expected end. I need you to hear me with your spiritual ears. God does not lie. It is what it is. So he's not even trying to figure out if he's still going to give it to you. He's not trying to figure out if you're still worthy of it. He's not trying to figure out along the way if, if, if you've got what it takes. He knew that you had what it took he know, or, and what it takes. He knew that you, that, that you were the person for the job before he formed Adam. What we're dealing with is the enemy. What we're dealing with is not even sometimes the enemy. It's our own decision making because when we don't see the when we don't see the baby moving or when we don't see the growth the way we think we should see it by five months or because we don't feel, you know, feel certain things, then we start making decisions based on what we see and not what we know about the spirit of the Lord God, not what we know about the timeline of creation and, and how he put everything into motion. God's not figuring it out uh, as long, uh, along, along the way. It is what it is. And I need you and, and God needs us to, to birth a new understanding of him. That it is what it is. Remember when Jacob wanted to marry Rachel, God had already set the tribes of Israel into motion. And he was doing it through Jacob, who he was going to name Israel. And that those tribes had to come about a certain way. And those tribes were not complete. I need you to hear me by the Spirit of the Lord. Those tribes were not complete until baby Benjamin came along. Until Joseph came along. But they could not come along without Rachel. And so Jacob is tricked into marrying Leah. The one with no vision. The one with no sight. By his own family. He was tricked. So he could have looked at the evidence and said, well, I'm married to Leah now. The things God said about, um, you know, my grandfather Abraham. The things that he said about, you know, the things he said about my father Isaac. They can't come to pass because now I'm married. I'm married to Leah. No, no. No, 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 no. He could have stopped it there, but Jacob kept pressing and he worked for Rachel and he worked. And what you must do in this hour is push and work for that thing that you know, not that thing that you see, because you may not see it to be completed. Remember in the beginning, God did not rest. God did not even say it was good until everything that he had set forth to complete in that day 
was indeed complete and he is this he's the same yesterday today and forevermore he is the same about you as he is about jesus christ he is the same about you as he is about himself because he lives in us he lives in us so your destiny is his destiny and this is what he wants me to impress upon you before i get off if you fail to understand how he operates how he works if you fail to understand his love for you and his mind about uh, about about creation about everything that he's put into motion about you my love it puts you in danger of 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 having hardship in your relationship with him because you're not seeing him correct so it is of the utmost most importance that these things come to pass in your life because god is not willing to risk his relationship the status of his relationship with you he understands that there are things that he said are coming to pass. And he understands that, that we are human and that there is a need for us to see him move in our lives. And our relationship and how we see him is dependent on that. And he understands that. That is why you write the vision and you make it plain. That is why we must, you know, work faith without works is dead. You know why? Because we have to understand by faith that it's coming to pass and push for that thing to come to pass. Not because it's, we're going to do it ourselves because God already pushed, um, put it, put it into motion. What we have to do is push past the walls of the enemy, push past, um, how he, how the enemy, um, tries to come into our thoughts, tries to get us to look too much at our circumstances. We have got to push past things. It's already done according to the word of the Lord. It's already done. What we must do is push past the way when Jesus Christ was led into the wilderness by the spirit of God. Jesus could have fallen at every temptation, but he pushed past. He, he responds to the enemy. It's written for it is written. This is what the Lord God of hosts says about me. I don't need you to prove that I am the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I don't need you to prove that I am the Prince of Peace, that I'm the everlasting Father. I don't need you to prove that governments rest on my shoulders because I already know because God said it. Because he said it. Even to this day, there are things that have to be completed. For Jesus Christ. He says, I only do that which I see my father do. He says, no man knoweth the day nor the hour that the son of man will return except for my father in heaven. Jesus Christ himself, Jesus Christ himself is waiting in faith for the day that he will be vindicated for the day that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. You know why? There's so many people that have said, oh, where's your Jesus now? Oh, they think there's going to be some rapture. They think that Jesus is actually going to return. They think that Jesus was actually the, 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 the son of God. You think Jesus is not waiting for that word to be completed? You think he's not waiting for CNN to broadcast the lights in the sky that were human beings that were walking the earth. And now they are in, they are now they are in heaven with, with, with the creator of the universe of all things that were, are, and are to come. Jesus is waiting just like you and I. Push past your thoughts. Push past what you see or what you don't see. The lack thereof. Because of what you know about your God. This is about knowing the character of God. Of Yahweh. Of Jehovah. Whatever it is you call him. Father. Abba. You got to know that you 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 know. That that thing that you have seen. Whether it is a marriage, the salvation of your children, your friends, your family, whether it's a business, you have to know like Jacob knew, no, Rachel's my wife. Rachel's not my sister-in-law. Rachel is my wife. And Benjamin and Joseph are, 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 are waiting for me to push past this season of Leah. Push past your season of Leah. Oh yeah, you think you got the short end of the stick, but in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, that word is coming to pass. And the Lord says, some of them are coming to pass before the year is out. It just takes for you to push past. 
if you receive this word, if you come into agreement with this word, type amen. I love you. Be blessed. Happy holidays. And I will see you very, very soon. Mwah.